must uh, be aware that uh, Chinese with uh, their values, that is breaching uh, human rights, uh, killing, torturing, abducting people, uh, political prisoners, uh, minorities, they actually are the biggest threat for our Western society. We really might expect war, world war for resources. Hi everyone, welcome to the show. Today we have a new guest, it's Joanna Siekiera. So that's our first woman in the show and also a Polish scholar. So I'm very, very happy. Welcome, Joanna. And please- Thank you very much, I'm happy to be here. Please introduce yourself, tell us where you are and how you ended up in Norway. So ladies and gentlemen, first of all, Bula, that is greetings from Fiji. I'm uh, in Suva, capital city of, of Fiji. Um, I work currently for the University of Bergen in Norway at the Faculty of Law, but this is not only my sole occupation. I work also for NATO as a legal advisor. So I teach officers um, law of armed conflict. Um, but, but again, for Norwegians, uh, I am responsible for the law of the sea. So uh, how international relations uh, work uh, at the, uh, in the maritime uh, arena. Okay, so that's why we, we would like to ask you a little bit about the situation uh, regarding the Pacific Islands and China. Um, one thing that I would like to ask is that uh, the islands have been under the radar for, for, for a long time. And recently yeah. we see, we're seeing like a red alert and uh, the countries around uh, the islands, its neighbor Australia and the US are very interested because uh, China now is uh, making a huge progress in arranging new relationships and closer relationships with those islands. Uh, they are bringing investment and they are, they are signing security deals. Uh, so could you please tell us a little bit about the situation and how come none of those nations have, has been aware before about all the changes that are going on in the region? Very good question. Thank you for this. Uh, for us in Europe, we are primarily focused on Russia. For us, Russia is the biggest threat. But ladies and gentlemen, when we look at the bigger picture that is whole uh, Earth. We we must uh, be aware that uh, Chinese with uh, their values, that is breaching uh, human rights, uh, killing, torturing, abducting people, uh, political prisoners, uh, minorities, they actually are the biggest threat for our Western civilization. It's like uh, we could say, it's like a blue team, uh, the Anglo-Saxon world, like New Zealand and uh, Australia. Uh, versus the, um, the Chinese, because they not only bring their uh, promises and investments that maybe happen, maybe not, but they also bring new values. And from what I can tell, um, the societies and the populations on the islands, they are not so happy about China coming in. But I think that the CCP has made good friends with their elites, right? Indeed, indeed. Um, exactly. When we talk about Chinese presence, uh, it's not only diplomatic or military presence, as we had uh, in, in March, um, signing that pact uh, between China and uh, Solomon Islands, but it's also about investing or rather buying off, buying off um, every real estate, bank, commercial centers. So as Chinese, they have money, contrary to... Um, poor undeveloped Oceania uh, people. They are really poor. Just imagine here, I've been observing people, they, like, per day, they earn less than $2. So, so exactly, this is a, a, big, uh, a big threat for them. And as you said um, uh, previously, US um, uh, has been absent here in Pacific. They were focused mainly in the, uh, uh, in Asia, so of course uh, Iraq and Afghanistan. So this uh, this region, this oceanic region, uh, has been neglected. And suddenly, American administration woke up. Um, everyone is hoping that this is not too late, uh, because uh, everyone is aware that what Chinese are doing in Africa, 
yes, this is this is obvious for us, but how about Oceania? And again, we, we might say this region is very poor uh, and so on and so on. But when we collect uh, the votes at United Nations, we can see that there is a big regional voice. Uh, so, for example, looking at Polish uh, involvement in the Pacific, uh, when we wanted to become a non um, a permanent uh, member of a Security Council in the United Nations, we suddenly um, established diplomatic relations with, with uh, the tiny islands. So, so we must be aware that Pacific is indeed gaining international attention. Uh, I, as a researcher on, on Pacific, uh, say that the 21st century is actually the Pacific century. Here, ladies and gentlemen, we not only have those... Uh, crossings of uh, maritime and air uh, trade routes, but also we have enormous resources at the seabed. For now, technology is not yet good enough to dive in, to dig and to grab those resources. But once technology be good, enough, we really might expect war, world war for resources. Could you tell us how does the Chinese expansion look like? I, I could imagine that maybe first uh, regular Chinese come in, the, um, the overseas Chinese, they open shops, maybe then bigger businesses, and then um, they have support from the embassy. And uh, yeah, then uh, it's easy for the Chinese government to exert influence or maybe threaten their families at home to, you know, to behave the way the Chinese government wants them to. So is this all a danger? for the local population, that slowly maybe the Chinese would take over businesses, political influence, uh, slowly maybe there would be uh, military ships like port calls, maybe they would stay longer, there would be a, a military or naval base. How exactly does it look like? Do you know? Exactly uh, how you described. Uh, I can recall my uh, well personal example when I was uh, living in uh, New Zealand. And I, I was talking to my, my friends, both Kiwis and Polish, and they were saying that uh, Chinese, uh, they are everywhere uh, in a sense that when you want to get a job, like um, in hospitality or at uh, some restaurant, you must speak either Mandarinian or Cantonese. So it means that this is impossible to fulfill by ordinary person, um, both in New Zealand, but also in Pacific, uh, that the Chinese are uh, actually very good in, in networking, but in a sense that uh, protecting own community. And when one investor is being sent by Beijing, he or she always comes with family. And then more of uh, his family are, are coming to join him. Uh, what I heard also is... Uh, uh, well, critical when it comes to passports, because how many people can actually speak fluent any kind of language from China to be aware that that passport has been a uh, fraud? We don't know that. And they are, of course, misusing legal um, um, regulations because nobody is able to, to spot if, if uh, that uh, person from China is, is really doing what uh, he or she said. And uh, I will end here with uh, the latest example from Fiji. Uh, last week um, was the um, 51st summit of the Pacific Islands Forum. And guess what? Two um, spies were kicked off. <laughs> Chinese, right? They, yes. they claimed that they were journalists, uh, but actually they yes. were. Uh, yes, exactly. So, so you can see Chinese are everywhere and it's really hard to defect if they are really with good or bad intentions. Yes, and they were spotted by coincidence by a local journalist who take, took an issue with them because before, when Wang Yi was visiting the islands, those two guys restricted this local journalist from attending the event. So he remembered them well, and then kind of karma came back. Yes. Yes, so it's true that they are everywhere and they exert a lot of influence. My next question is... Um, Recently, we had this summit in Madrid, and we had uh, four guests uh, from um, from Asia. Uh, it was uh, South Korea, Australia, uh, Japan, and uh, New Zealand. 
Yes, exactly. So I, I wonder why were those Pacific islands not invited, not in terms of uh, like NATO members, but maybe just to, to show them, you know, that we are with us and uh, it would be a nice way uh, to appreciate them and to treat them like, as equals. I think that would be a good gesture to kind of counter the Chinese influence. Well, uh, again, me as a lawyer, I will uh, put my emotions aside and, and focus on, on hard law. So according to Washington Treaty, those countries cannot become a member, none of them, because they are outside of the Euro-Atlantic uh, zone. Uh, what they can do, and they were invited to not to even be observer, as, as we have, for example, in yes, the United yes. Nations, right? Uh, but uh, this is, again, um, underlining common values. Uh, aligning those Western values um, and also when it comes to common threat that is Russia and China because ladies and gentlemen for the first time uh, in, in NATO history uh, those two countries were uh, named and blamed only in NATO summit um, we, we were given this um, uh, strategic concept uh, so, so finally, what the uh, U.S. Uh, has been striving for for many, many years uh, to, to also put uh, China as a threat for the Euro-Atlantic zone. Uh, as, as I said before, for us, uh, we see war in Ukraine, of course, but I like to use this example that this is rather a starter. This is a proxy war because uh, China is the, the biggest threat and uh, when Chinese will uh, achieve a success in the Pacific, the largest water basin on, on planet, then we will have problems, uh, big problems.